Drama Wednesdays. So it's about midday, June 30th, and I just had an email exchange with a quite famous CBS news reporter. You've seen him Sunday morning doing news specials probably. His name is David Pogue. David Pogue. I'll put up a, a picture. And uh, yeah, he spent 10 years flagging the issue on national TVS, TV, CBS Sunday morning. I'm looking at my laptop here, guys so I can tell you the email, um, and Nova, and he wrote a book about it, and he writes tweets, and this guy has like three or four children, so, you know, I understand his head's caught up in a little different place, but at no mention in any of this does he talk about the aerosol masking effect or anything. So the premise here is why I'm doing this, why this happened is because he posted a video, kind of like mine, but longer and more like greenwashed and g generic. I'll put a link to it. But essentially, he's like talking about rep he's talking about RCP 4.5. He's talking about like this this kind of dream world where all the corporations whose sole goal is to extract as much resources out of the planet because that's capitalism at the expense of the natural world. We take all resources, and it's predatory. And he's under the assumption that these companies, Nike, Apple, like all these big companies will go good on their word. And same with China, who's still investing trillions of dollars in the Belt and Road Initiative. He's full of hope, us, what us doomers like to call hopium. And it bothers me because, why? Because I don't like when people tell the truth, but they don't tell the whole truth. They don't, they keep paying, so I'll put the link, like I said, it's just a very generic, like sea levels will rise, like, these are some good places you can live if you have money. Like, this guy was paid by CBS, like, by the hand that feeds him. It's kind of obvious, but I felt like just just giving him a dose of reality. I'm not about to bullshit around the corner and tell you, like, yeah, we, we can mitigate and we can, you know, s the corporations are going to stop producing. Governments will, you know, be true to their word, even though the Chamber of Commerce has literally been a direct opposition to, to climate it's been in climate denial since 1989. It knew the problem that our fucking chamber of commerce from, from, you know, in the U.S. government. Anyways, let me just talk about this email. I just wrote him an email. I said, hey, David, I'm 32-year-old reporter in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I've been reporting and following up on climate change ever since I first read the IPCC report in 2016. I did like your pre presentation. I'm going to sum summarize a little here, but I, there's a few caveats to like do consider and respond. And I said, the upcoming IPCC is supposed to be released in February 2022, which was leaked to French media, and basically said that if we don't stop all carbon emissions right now in the next few years and suck all the 420 parts per million out of the atmosphere, the worst, is, the worst is yet to come. Quote, the worst is yet to come. I said, how do you feel about this upcoming assessment's much more grim timeline? I gave him that first question because in his video, he's like, he's thinking that same thing, like, oh, we got to decarbonize. All these companies are going to be de decarbonized and carbon neutral by 20." 30, or I mean by 2050, and I'm like, none of that matters. We're gonna be in Pliocene-like conditions by 2030. That's our habitat, we can't, li I'm trying to cause him to think. He's not, he's in this greenwash world. I mean, it's so typical, and he has children. And I said, then I said, number two, you state to live all these places where, uh, where like you could go to live because of climate. And I said, because um, I live in reality, you know? I don't care you write the books, you seem like some expert, like you're blinded by your own ignorance of intelligence. You know, that happens to really smart. This guy went to Yale for music. Anyways, I say, number two, you stay at all these places without considering where the millions of people who become climate refugees will go. And I said, even with this own country, I mean, we're talking about millions of people who live in Miami-Dade, a lot of places in the East Coast, Miami, like where are they gonna go, okay? Well, how are you gonna move all those people inland like I said, and rebuild, we're going to rebuild like a magical land. They're going to move up to Vermont or something. And I said, where do you, how do you feed and house all these millions of people? And then I kicked them with the last one. I was like, hey, the last time CO2 levels were this high in the atmosphere, we were in the Pliocene epoch. And I said, it's like a blanket effect. The CO2 will catch up with us in 10 years and we'll enter conditions again. Here's a peer-reviewed paper. And I'll put that link too, which is like, you know, Pliocene, that's the most, you know, consistent analog with what... We, you know, we're going. And I said, so what does it give a damn that these companies go carbon neutral when that's where we're headed? I said, it's already baked into the system. I said, then how about China and Russia? And I said, I just found some huge gaps in your otherwise technically sound analysis of the basic threat. I just feel like, like it's just a basic analysis. And then he, he sends me a response back. He sends me an email and he says, 
Uh, to number one about the IPCC report saying the worst is yet to come. He says, I totally agree. The worst is yet to come. Even if we don't, that is a downward slope that's already begun. Has no chance of turning around the next couple of years. Exactly. Right? We're on, the, we're on the downward slope. And I say, number two, you state all these places like we're uh, to live, you know, where are these millions of people going to go? And he says, I think the biggest migration will be from Central America on this continent, that is. It's a ticking time bomb. What about all the Americans and Canadians? Like, you're, you're thinking just, it's just a, we're going to be a, like a couple million, 100 million, what, it's going to be, you know, a couple million um, migrants from South, from South America. Like that's, you know, that's what we're going to have to deal with. It's like, no, it's going to be everywhere at once. There's going to be climate refugees from fire, from hurricanes, from food losses. It's going to be hell from all corners. Uh, and he says there's no good answers how we'll feed them. And so he says he reasons to mitigate. He says it's hard and fast as possible. And he gives a, he's a, gives a discussion of the problem on page 478. And then I said, um, you know, the last time CO2 levels, the number three. And he says, well, obviously all stakeholders, governments, and, you know, everybody... Agriculture all has to change their ways in, in order to decarbonize societal. We need each one to go CO2 n neutral and negative. So the fact that it's become a fashionable uh, for corporations to clean up their act is a very pot. Oh, because companies want to be fashionable now. Yeah, they want to cater to their bottom freaking line to make money for shareholders. Do you go know where the banks just made a major pay payout to stock stakeholders like the other day? Like, are you like, yeah, dude? I'm not making a big deal about it. I just wanted to stand up and tell the fucking truth. That's the thing. I want to tell the truth, dude. That near-term human extinction is real, dude. Stop greenwashing. Stop, for goodness sake, greenwashing. And then I said, how about China and Russia? And he says, yeah, China and India are big offenders here. You know, they have, oh, but, but fortunately, China and India have made substantial commitments to decarbonizing. Oh, they signed the Paris Agreement. What does that mean that they signed it? Are they being held accountable? Are we going to go in and take their children? Like, nothing is holding them accountable, dude. Uh, and then he gives me all these, like, uh, like oh, they're got China's the biggest wind turbine faction, you know, manufacturer, you know, and, you know, just giving me, oh, they want to achieve carbon neutrality before 2060. It's like, nah, dude, you're missing the point, man. You're missing the point again. He's and then he ends with like, uh, you know, I'm not sure what you're getting at here. The presentation is intended to equip viewers with a practical advice on how to prepare for climate disaster, not to make just some judgment on how hopeful to be. Well, I am making the judgment, and I think that's super fucking helpful that you make it, that you give them the full facts of what's going on. You know, I, I, and I've said myself, I believe we'll decarbonize in time. I think I said 80 to 100 years from now. No, dude, we don't have 80 to 100 years. Goodness gracious. I said, what about the aerosol masking effect? Do you know what that is? I replied back. I was like, even if we stopped all emissions, the aerosols are keeping us cool. If they fell to earth, effectively, immediately, we'll be instantaneously warm up by at least half a degree, at least. Uh, and I said, I think you're just missing the point that if the Arctic melts by 2035 and we have already Pliocene-like conditions by 2030, I mean, look at the drought in the look, look at the drought in the West. Look at how it exponentially increased. Look at 2020's drought and look at 2021. It's exponential, exponential growth and feedback loops. Like, get the whole picture. And I said, I think you're being overly trusting in co corporations, perhaps because they fed you for so long, to actually honestly believe these companies will hold true to their agreements, which is only in word considering what capitalism di dictates is the commodica commodification of everything in the natural world. So what's p holding them back from pillaging the planet of its resources until the very last drop? Honestly, dude, what's going to stop Apple being like, mm, I'm not going to make an iWatch 7. You know, it's going to keep going, dude. And to say China, and even though they're investing in the Belt and Road Initiative, that continues to p plow and drill in the Arctic. I mean, Russia, sorry, Russia. You know, do you know where tensions are at in US, China, and Russia? Why would any back down in supreme dominance? Why would any country be like, well, we should decarbonize and start to regress, deindustrialize, but we also want to attain supreme dominancy in the world? Hmm, how do we, dude, we can't do it. You're not being rational. That's the problem. Like, rationally think about this. Thanks. I said, thanks for your response, but this is all very generic. You're a clearly privileged and optimistic greenwash version of the calamity that will unfold in the next decade or two. I honestly hope you would tell your viewers a more thoroughly researched and considerate presentation on the fact, not just basic facts, but what the, the basic facts, but really where, where we lay at in our present moment in our history. And I said, newsflash, I also said another minute, newsflash, this is your government. And I sent him an Esquire, the news about the Chamber of Commerce and climate denial. 
I'll put a link to that too. And then he replies back and he's like, hey Reagan, I'm not sure what your goal is here. You and I are lying. The crime crisis is real and getting worse. We need to do everything in our power to mitigate and adapt. The planet we're leaving for our children and their children is in terrible shape. I've spent 10 years flagging the issue on national TV and I just wrote a book about it. This is this ego, you know, experience thing. And, 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 is, and is there something more you'd like me to do? Yeah, to tell the truth that like, we are hopeless. Uh, get the picture. I wonder if you've actually read my book. No, I haven't. Most people call it terrifying and scary, but I th don't think I'm missing out on that part of the conversation. I did wa he watched my main video on my channel, The Future is Hell, and he says, you're more pessimist than I am, but so what? Uh, we both have the same issues. Communicate the urgency and doing everything in our power to head off disaster. No. And it said, no. He said, no, question mark. Like, that's not. And I said, no, we have two different messages and missions and messages. I'm saying the end is like here, and one should be participating in all any and all joys left at their convenience, or what they are, what they are able to attain, if, even if it's small. Take up gardening, like whatever you want to do. And I said, no, I'm just saying it's already too late. Not telling the whole truth is a lie to me and generally everyone. You know, like what if I told you, oh, I went to the store, but you know, they had this thing, but they didn't. I, I, I didn't get I didn't get it. Well, was there another thing? Yeah. Oh, why didn't you get that? I mean, it's like a half lie. It's like it, it, it contradicts, you know. And I said, us humans will not exist on this rock much longer after 2030. Disaster is already baked in. And I'm underlying it and, and highlighted this. Again, I repeat, we will be in the Pliocene-like conditions by 2030 when temperatures were 1.8 to 3 degrees Celsius higher than the pre-industrial average. No, we do not live We do not live in this habitat. The word is habitat. In all those years, did you ever consider what it takes to sustain life here? How exactly do I ask, how exactly I ask, do you de-industrialize an entire civilization in three years? One more quick follow-up email he just sent me here late in the day. Well, I spent two years interviewing climate experts all over the world who spent their entire careers in the trenches. I can assure you that I never met a single one that believed the end of the world was nine years away. But I'm sure, but I'm glad you're spreading the word that more people need to take this crisis seriously. Pogue out! Yes, a grown man just referred to himself in third person. That's how you know, like, ego or anything isn't, isn't attached. And I replied, we won't be able to sustain much longer after 2030. The climate specialist you spoke to probably didn't consider actual habitat for humans, what it takes to sustain us, like ample amount of calories, access to health and resources and water on tap. I mean, basic supplies. And he says, I mean, basic, li basic life. And I said, you're, then I said, your children will suffer miserably, and I'm sorry you don't understand the concept of exponential growth. Your ignorance blinds you. Reagan, out! So, I just referred to myself in third person as a little retaliation. I have, am immature. Okay. I'm just, I'm, you know, is it picking a fight? Maybe. I'm just getting, I'm just getting clarification, because we're past the point of educational, you know, mitigation adapts. We're done. We're done for, definitely by 2040. No, we have two different messages. We have two different messages. I'm saying, live it up. Live for now. Okay, that was my drama Wednesdays. It's almost July. See you guys next time.